All right, let's get started. So thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Georgia. I am the outreach and engagement developer here at Holt and Environmental Network. I'm also a university student studying environment resources and sustainability. So this week is Earth Week, as you guys probably know, and it's a great time to reflect on the impacts we have on the environment and what actions we can take to be kinder to the Earth. So one of the ways that we impact the environment every day is by what type of shopping bag we choose to bring with us to the store. So for this session, Battle of the Bags, we're going to be comparing each of these bags to see their different impacts on the environment. And before we start, I'm curious to know what you guys will think um, is the most eco-friendly bag. So I'm just going to launch a poll real quickly. And I'd love if you guys could take a guess on which type of bag, plastic, paper, or canvas, do you think is the best for the environment? So I'll just give you guys a couple seconds to answer. All right, it looks like most people said canvas or reusable bags, and we got one person for paper. So let's find out. All right, so a little bit of an intro to the dilemma we have going on. Um, if you're interested in environmental issues, or even if not, you probably already heard of the bi big push against plastics. As I saw from the poll, no one chose plastics. So in terms of shopping bags, in Canada, we saw many retailers start to charge a small fee for plastic bags to encourage people to consider alternatives, such as bringing reusable bags instead. Some stores even switch to paper bags, but as we know, paper is a driver of deforestation, so is it really more eco-friendly? And then we also have our reusable bags, which most of you guys chose as the eco-friendly alternative. So we saw a mass production of these reusable bags as many retailers and even event promoters started giving out branded reusable bags as freebies or you may even have chosen to buy some from the grocery store to carry your groceries in. And this seems like a great alternative because you're only using one bag instead of something often disposable like paper or plastic. So of course it depends on the material, but if we take canvas bags, for example, canvas is made from cotton, which requires a lot of water and energy to produce. So there's a much higher ecological footprint per bag. So, I often wonder how many times do we have to reuse the same reusable bag in order for it to actually be better for the environment. And all these different factors seem kind of difficult to consider and because there's a lot going on. So it may be tricky to decide what kind of bag to bring shopping with you. So I'm an environmental studies student, as I said, and we try to figure out these kinds of problems. And one really useful tool we use to figure out which option would be best for the environment is to use something called a life cycle assessment. So a life cycle assessment, or sometimes called a life cycle analysis, not as boring as it looks, it helps us decide which option has the lowest environmental impact by taking into consideration every stage of a product's life. So everything from the raw materials to the production, distribution, to the end of life disposal. So these life cycle assessments can get really in depth and super detailed, but today I'm just going to do a simplified analysis to help introduce the big idea for you and start like getting you guys thinking about the different factors involved that aren't always obvious. And for the sake of simplification and time, and since I don't wanna bore you with calculations, we're not gonna get into the specifics, but we'll look at the big ideas surrounding production, use, and the end of life for each type of bag. So the exact numbers like vary, and it kind of depends on where the bag was sourced from, including like what exact materials, technology, and energy sources were used. So we'll just take a look at the general inputs for each type of bag and compare them. So let's start with the conventional plastic bag, the kind we see everywhere. An important thing to keep in mind is that there are so many different types of plastics, um, but for plastic bags, polyethylene is the most common type of plastic used. 
The main resources to create polyethylene are natural gas and petroleum, which are non-renewable resources and both require large amounts of energy to extract and refine. Energy is needed during the life cycle of a plastic bag and every bag for that matter. And this usually comes from non-renewable sources such as fossil fuels, but obviously it depends on the energy source of where that bag is produced. And there's also a really significant carbon footprint to transport materials from different stages to manufacturing, as well as transporting the product to the consumer and then to recycling or landfill. And plastic bags are single-use plastics and are often discarded after getting home from the grocery store. And due to the thin material, they usually rip after just a couple of uses. They can be used a couple of times, and a lot of people like myself reuse them as garbage bags. And since they're so widely reused as garbage bags, it's good to keep in mind that if everyone did switch to reusable gro grocery bags, some people would still be buying additional plastic for their household garbage cans. So in terms of recycling, if we use the tool on the Halton Region website, it says plastic bags can go in the blue box. It also says that the Canadian Plastics Industry Association supports a program where you can bring plastics back to the original retailer for recycling. But when you click on the website to find a drop-off location, it says listings are only available for the United States, so I actually couldn't find any listings for drop-off locations here in Canada. And then when polyethylene actually gets recycled, it deteriorates in quality, so often recycled bags have to be mixed with new material. So often the energy used and cost for a recycled polyethylene bag ends up actually being quite similar to a new one. There are also some concerns about hygiene when recycling polyethylene due to the possibility of contamination. Also, since plastic bags are so lightweight, if we send them to landfill, often they get blown away by the wind and they pollute nearby forests and bodies of water. And st some studies examine whether plastic bags can actually biodegrade or not, or if they just break down into very small pieces called microplastics, which then further pollute the environment. Obviously, the process of composition depends on what kind of plastic is used for the plastic bag. So then let's move on to the next alternative we can think of, plastic, uh, paper bags. Some retailers have switched from providing um, basic plastic bags to paper bags instead as a response to the huge uproar about plastic bags. But are paper bags actually better for the environment? Let's take a look. So when we were talking about plastic bags and polyethylene was made from petroleum uh, which is a non-renewable resource. Paper is made from trees, which is a renewable resource, which sounds great, but mass producing paper bags is a huge driver of deforestation. So forest management of where the paper bag was sourced will greatly determine its carbon footprint, because as we know, cutting down trees releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and obviously that tree is no longer there to absorb further carbon. So the manufacturing of paper bags is also associated with a very high greenhouse gas and water footprint. So since paper bags have a higher footprint than plastic bags, they often need to be reused multiple times to be a better alternative. And paper bags are actually a little bit tricky to reuse. They're even less durable than plastic bags. They easily rip or tear, and they can't really withstand water so if any of your groceries leak or if you get caught in the rain mid-grocery run, you're out of luck. And the major problem with paper bags is its disposal. They generate a lot of weight since they are heavier and bulkier than plastic bags. And paper bags are recyclable, but a lot of them have plastic linings in them, which makes them tricky to recycle. Also, when you try to recycle paper, it does lose its quality, so you can't recycle it an infinite amount of times. And this also has implications for other things, like for example, the big movement against plastic straws. So many places are now switching from plastic to paper straws as the alleged eco-friendly alternative. And by doing the same process of a life cycle analysis, you can find out if paper straws are actually a better, better alternative. 
So let's move on to reusable bags, which a lot of you guys said would be the eco-friendly alternative. And for our purposes, we'll look at canvas bags, which are usually made of cotton, because obviously reusable bags can be made of many different materials, such as a thicker plastic or different types of fabrics. So according to a UN report, a reusable bag actually needs to be used 50 to 150 times more to have a lower impact on the climate than a single use plastic bag. This is because the manufacturing process of a canvas bag has the highest impact out of the plastic and paper counterparts. So since they're made from durable materials, they require large amounts of energy use to manufacture. So if we're taking our cotton, for example, cotton production is very water and pesticide intensive. GMO cotton pesticide use is not only harmful to the environment, but also to the health of the surrounding community where it's used. And reusable bags often use a blend of materials, so they're really tricky to recycle, and they often just go to landfill. And textile waste is a huge problem as textiles release harmful greenhouse gases as they decompose in landfill. And some people have also speculated about health concerns about reusing ba about reusable bags, especially during the pandemic. Lately, I've heard a lot of stores saying they're no longer accepting reusable bags and um, they'd rather you just use single use plastic bags instead because unclean, uncleaned fabric bags can become a breeding ground for bacteria, mold, and viruses. So you can get rid of this health risk by making sure to wash your reusable bags. And throwing your reusable bags into the uh, laundry is actually only a minuscule amount of water and energy use compared to producing a whole new bag of any type. So you don't really need to worry about washing your reusable bags for adding to your environmental footprint. So now we've kind of done a little overview of all the different types of bags. So now let's find out who the winner is. So if you guys remember at the beginning, I asked everyone to take a guess on which one they think is the best alternative. So let's see if you got it right. So the shopping bag with the lowest footprint is actually, let me explain. It's sort of plastic bags. Plastic bags are generally found to have the lowest carbon footprint out of their paper and canvas counterparts. Plastic bags typically have the smallest footprint per bag um, because they're find, found to have a high reuse rate with people using them for other things such as garbage cans, like I mentioned. Um, but this greatly varies depending on like the size of the bag, where the bag was made, etc. So don't go rushing back to plastic just yet. And the most important thing to take into consideration is that these results will drastically change depending on the number of times you use a bag. So since most people are kind of in a take and then throw away mindset, a plastic bag ban could actually be harmful. Since plastic is the lowest um, environmental footprint per use, Unless people are prepared to reuse the same alternative bags over and over, banning plastic bags could result in a higher overall environmental impact because people won't be able to use the um, reusable bags enough times for it to be the better alternative. But the problem is most plastic bags are single use and are kind of thin, so they're not really durable enough to withstand many uses. And also, let's just point out for a second that just because something has a lower footprint than its popular counterparts does still not make it necessarily good for the environment. Obviously, as we all know, plastic comes with its own set of environmental issues, such as fossil fuel use and plastic pollution. Reusable bags do have a great potential to be the best option for the environment, but it really requires everyone to be responsible and to keep using the same ones over and over. So as long as you are able to keep reusing the same bag, the most eco-friendly option is actually the bag that you already have. 
<laughs> so if you already have a bunch of bags of any type, you're best to just keep reusing those. And sometimes we end up with way too many reusable bags we've collected from different stores and events. So there are plenty to go around and we really don't need to produce any more new ones. And by reusing something you already have, you're cutting down the entire production process of making something new, as well as saving something old from landfill. So I know this was a lot of information, but the main takeaway is that reusable bags would have the lowest footprint if they were to be reused enough times. So if you don't already have reusable bags, or if the ones you have are starting to fall apart, you could always make a durable reusable bag out of items you already have. So in my house, we keep all the plastic bags so we can reuse them, which is perfect for these kind of projects if you're feeling crafty. The first project we have includes um, fusing together several plastic bags with an iron to create a sheet. Then you create multiple sheets and you sew it together into a bag. And the second project is to make plastic yarn, or also known as plarn, and then crochet it into a bag. Both of these make a really strong material and a lot more durable than a single use plastic bag. So you can reuse it many more times, as well as finally get rid of that giant stash of plastic bags you have sitting around your house. So making your own DIY reusable bag out of materials you already have is the most eco-friendly option and is also a really fun activity if you enjoy crafts. So if you sew, you might have a lot of fabric scraps or you could just have fabric scraps from your worn out clothing, which is a great option to make a patchwork bag. And this is completely personalizable. So even if you don't like how traditional patchwork looks, you can still combine whatever scraps you think look nice. It's also a great way to use up all your scraps and to make it into something practical that you'll get a lot of use out of. And if you don't have fabric scraps, you still probably have a bunch of worn out extra clothing and you can upcycle that old t-shirt into a bag. So I hope this got, gave you guys a little bit of inspiration on some ideas on how to be more eco-friendly for Earth Day. I'm hoping to potentially make some follow-up videos for YouTube to show you guys step-by-step -step how to make these projects, but you can also find a lot of ideas and guidance online. So everything I've sourced so far in this presentation, and if you want to read more on, you can find in these sources that I list here. So feel free to take a screenshot if you're interested in doing some further reading. The first one is a great page from the University of British Columbia that goes really in depth on the full life cycle of a plastic bag using some hard numbers. And then there's a really great paper from the UN Environment Program, which evaluates the impact of a plastic bag and their alternatives, just like we did today, but in a lot more details and again, using data for measurements. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. This is a part of our Earth Week activities. So make sure to check out everything else we have going on by checking out our social media. I have two upcycling workshops already posted on the Halton Environmental Network YouTube channel that you can go and watch. We also have an Earth Day screening of Percy followed by a live Q&A coming up tomorrow. And we have a hen bingo card running all week where you can win a native seed bundle. And you can find all these items by going to our website, haltonvarnet.ca slash special events. And feel free to stick around for a little bit longer if you have any questions or comments to do so. And I'm also gonna take a look at the chat. Awesome. I'm so glad that you guys all enjoyed the presentation and that's all I have for you. So um, feel free to just stick around if you'd like, but if not, I hope you have a wonderful Earth Week.